um, <clears throat> with this tutorial we will end the study of our deductive databases in the previous tutorial we design the database uh, relational well at uh, yeah relational database for the following schema with these instances with the, so we create the table for employees for departments and supervise and we created a system but we said well it's not actually a deductive database yet because we don't have any inference and then I said we will go back to this graph soon and we solve these queries just in the way that we will do in the relational system so we actually solve it two ways we were using SQL and then we were using the data log like we just showed in a relational system so now again data log is a subset of prolog and prolog is a complete programming language and um, we were using two approaches the SQL and, and, and it's just the way that we have it so in SQL queries we do the following I mean, we selected some tuples that are in the tables that meet the conditions that are listed on the where why in data log what we basically do is we try to match um, values on the variables that are on the statements to make the statement true and that's what it implies the using of some uh, logic and um, now we already got this defined in our system but this is just a set of facts we need some type of rules and uh, we go over how these rules work so for example here we got this information that we were discussing previously that there is not nothing listed in the facts it says that James has something to do with John or the people that are under this other two managers or supervisors and um, the way that we do is that we create rules another way of seeing this rule is like a kind of we're creating a virtual table that has the capability of searching and goes on recursion so here is like okay there is a new table that has an x and a y and this table i mean means x is the supervisor of y or the superior if on the table supervised you, you can actually see that x supervised y so this will be just we see that directly is actually stated the second one is the one that usually has recursion so usually the rules are two rules like the one that is like the base case and the one that has the recursion so here superior x is the superior y if x supervised z and then z is the superior y and this is the one that we call that uses the recursion y because it's going with the one that is being defined and that's how we can add other uh, facts so now here we can kind of do the reverse the super generic x is the super generic of y if y is the supervisor of x for example so these are rules and we can extract other information so by adding this into my database into my system I mean in probably in the text file so for example if we go and I still have the text file over here remember that we got that information so what you need to do is add this information there in the file and so for example we copy this we go back over here the way that we exit this is h a l t halt period so we exit from the system and then i go one of the people deductive database to that pl so this is what i have here and then i can do edit paste it control x we save it then we go back to G prolog we load the file which is ddb 2pl and 
there. So now we can go and say superior and the name is James, I think, yeah, James. Let's see if we can get the uh, James. Is this a period of who? Dot. And we can say A. And James is the superior of everyone. Why? Because James is right here. So he's the superior of every single person, right? Because he's the CEO. So and that's what we got, for example, in that implementation. And then so there's different ways of testing. Okay, now the next thing that I want you to read is just that uh, the, some examples here on logic and how is that the rules are being implemented and, and, and that will be a good thing for you to read. And how is that, for example, we got these known facts and then there are other facts that are being derived, like for example, the one that I just did, James got this information so this information is not on there so what it means is this is what is explicit this is something that is implicit now the last part that i want to discuss is okay we got some notation in um most people study this using the notation of data log but uh the this is also being implemented in sql some sql standards from 1999 they got the sql 99 and some people implement that in which there are some type of recursion like the one that is being established here so for example this is this is from your textbook this what we will do is see how this is equivalent to what we will do in the in the data log notation remember that uh we were defining two parts like the base case and then something that has some type of recursion so here is defining table com part for the table here assembly. And then the idea here is, for example, for a trike, um, you need a frame, and then a frame can have other parts. You see, and then for a wheel, you can have these, and then for example, here tire, you can have this. So there are other things that are so parts of, for example, trike. You go and query this in a traditional way, you will only say the like, subparts for a trike are these two. But these are actually subparts of a trike too. And for that we need some type of recursion. So here we're kind of creating the table comp, like uh, the way that we will do it. And then it says, okay, get the two direct from this table assembly. And then the union is like the or the other way of getting those two elements that C is a subpart of A is by joining table assembly with uh, this table and then uh, we do the join and then we execute the, the, the selection for the query so for example in this case is whatever we want to query but the definition of the table actually ends right here so Maybe it seems some confusing, but what I'm doing is something equivalent to this. These two things. These two things, that's the part that is equivalent. And that's what we were doing in the last activity. So let's go there and look at the last activity. So this is the last activity. This is the thing that we were discussing. And then in this activity, it says, so we write this in an equivalent data log code. So that it finds all the components. So here you need to actually add this. So here we got something that is the query, right? This is this is the part about the rule, and this is the query. So here they are querying something. So for that, I already got that over here, and then look into the following. To actually test it, this in the Prolog system. Of course, we need the equivalent of this table. If this is the table assembly, then this is how we store that as a set of facts, right? 
So here, like for example, for the first one, trike, wheel, and tree, trike, wheel, and tree, and then the dot. Okay, so you can do that here. So I'm matching, and then the last one here is this one. So now, let's look into this notation. This is the name of the new table in SQL or the what we could be a big visual table because we're actually not creating the table but when this is called it's like a weird applying something like this rule so look this is comp this is comp how many parameters one two one two one is called part and the other is called subpart look at that i had that uppercase and uppercase so these are my variables so this is like the two variables now this comes from that there are two parts. One, I mean, this is one statement and the second statement. So the first statement is getting those two, which is the part and the subpart. That's what I have here. From my first statement, I'm getting part and subpart, part and subpart from table assembly. That's what we're doing here from assembly, part, subpart. And we don't care about the other one. That's the underscore. Now, for the other part, the other statement, it says, okay, is part and subpart. That's what it says here. This is the second part and subpart come from two tables, assembly and comp. And this is the one that has the recursion, from assembly and comp. So here is part. So from look at the first table, part, and then there is a C1 subpart, which is not in my answer over here right in my answer here uh, I'm sorry my, my answer here part and subpart so C1 it doesn't come from the table A2 it comes from the second table which is C1 that's the subpart of C1 so that's what I have here like for example part comes from table assembly and subpart comes from the other table but then there is a join which is in the where the subpart from the first table is the part from the second table. That's the Z here. The Z and the Z, and then they don't care. So this is equivalent to this, up to that. Look at that, I'm not highlighting the select because the select is a query. So for example, if I want to know everything here but in, in here it says finds all components of the trike. So here in my query will be, this is my query, comp, I'm open table comp, and then from trike. So the difference from here is that I will get, instead of the star, it will be um, what is it? The, the subpart from comp where let me see if I can actually type it. So this is getting the subpart from come to where part equals trike. And then the semicolon. So now this query is the same as this. When I got the, the star, I was basically having here come with a variable, let's say y comma x. So that means get me everything from there with no restrictions. But actually what I say here is that I want to find all components of a trike. So to do this, this is what we actually need over here. So here. Just copy this from the book, but in the book they will not solve in that. So this is very so this is the query. So what it means is in, in, in data log we got this in our file in the file that we loading and then when we're in the query system we will do this and then we get the answer. Okay. So that's what you supposed to do to answer this activity and um this concludes the study of deductive databases.